And I respect people of great faith, so. Og ég verði fólk sem hefur mikla trú. How are you doing? Hvernig hafið þið það? Is everybody dry? Er allir mjög þurrir? No. We went a little bit of sightseeing today. Við fórum í smá svona útsýnisferð í dag. Man, what a beautiful country you have. Ég er svo fallegt land. I could only see about 15 feet in front of me, but... Ég get aðeins séð bara þrjá metra fram fyrir mig. That 15 feet was beautiful. Og þessi nokkri metra voru yndislega fallegir. It was some of the most beautiful 15 feet I've ever seen. Fallegustu þrýr metra sem ég nokkur tíma séð. And hopefully, hopefully I've made enough friends here that I can come back and see the thousands of other feet. Vonandi hef ég eignað snúum marga vini hér á Íslandi leg. Við að búa þið eftir. It's good to be with you. Gott að vera hér. It's good to be in this amazing country. Og í þessu fallega landi. And, you know, they say that good things come in small packages. Góðu hluti gerast hægt, er sagt. Iceland is not a small package. Ísland er ekki lítill hlutur. Iceland is a very big package. Stór pakki. And uh, it's amazing how that the world is um, coming to your doorstep. Which is an incredible opportunity for you as a people. And uh, it's uh, a, an incredible privilege that when that happens. Nobody uh, comes to the state that I live in uh, to tour. Enginn kemur beint í útsýnisferð í því fylki sem ég býð í. It's flat. Það er flatt. There are no mountains. Enginn fjöll. The only thing we have are rodeos. Eina sem við hefum eru svona kúrekasjó. Now the rodeos are impressive. Og það er tilkomu mikið. You know what a rodeo is? Veit þið hvað það er? It's where really crazy men with very small brains chase cows with big horns that could kill them. Það sem að menn með litlan heila elta stórar beljur sem eru með stór hot og reyna að ná þeim. I can't wait to try it. Ég get ekki beðið eftir að fá að reyna það sjálfur. But they do have a really nice kind people in that state. Því þið hafið stórkostlega yndislegt fólk hér. I was a pastor in Chicago for 17 years. Ég var pastor í Chicago í 17 ár. Nobody ever accused Chicago of having really nice people. Og það er svona, það er kannski ekki beint flottast að vera. And the only mountains we have there are man-made mountains. Og einu fjöllin sem við eigum það er manngerð fjöll. That are really tall buildings. Það eru stórar byggingar. And, but that's beautiful. En það er líka fallegt. But there's something really great that's happening here in Iceland. And that's something very important to get us here in Iceland. And you're a country that has is really rich in a lot of prophetic words. Well, here is a land that may be very rich in a lot of prophetic words. Now, I'm, I'm, I need to ask you to do me a favor. You better be able to get me some more grave. Act like you're not in church right now. How do you get into the Jackie Kirk? You guys look like you're not relaxed enough for me. See, I've spent like two minutes with your pastor. And she's really smart. I can tell that already. She's really sharp. But you have me preaching to you. You don't have her preaching to you. So you've got to sort of bring the bar down. Setti allt neður. I can see you have it way up here. Bring it down. Bring it off of her level and bring it down to my level. Nú skulle við taka þetta úr hennar hæð og koma þessi niður í mína hæð. And just relax. Og bara slækið á. We used to, we used to say in our, in a sign outside of my church, we'd say, come as you are. Komdu eins og þú verð, segir á skilti fyrir utan kirkjun okkar. And until people started coming exactly as they were, and then we were like, "No, you need more clothes than that." Þangað til fólk fór að koma eins og það var og þá sem við hrýtum við þú kannski aðeins meira fyrir á þig heldur um að tína núna. We had coats we would loan them at the door here. Við vorum með kápur sem við lánum við fólki við dyrnar. Just to help them out. Bara svona til að hjálpa. 
But, uh, but we were, I, I, I want you to just feel very comfortable. En mér langar að líði bara vel. I grew up in church my entire life. Ég alist upp í kirkju allt mitt líf. And how many of you grew up in church all your life? Hvað mörg ykkar á þeim stað? About half of you. Helmingur. And uh, those of us who grew up in church our entire lives, we sort of grew up with this thinking of way church always should be. Við sem hefum alist upp í kirkju höfum svona ákveðna hugmyndu hvernig kirkjan á að vera. Now what I've found is that people who've grown up in those types of circumstances they have a tendency to rebel against that in some form or fashion. My rebellion wasn't to be like, you know, really wild or anything like that. My rebellion was, I'm going to do church the exact opposite of everything my parents did. And uh, we were determined to just do it drastically different. So we did really weird things, like we had worship at the end. We would get up and sing one song, and uh, we would do the announcements, and then I would get up and preach, we take up the offering after I preached, praying that conviction would hit the people and they would give more by the time I was done. And then we would do our, all of our worship at the end. Um, it worked really well with going into praying for people afterwards. Because then uh, people were like worship would really sort of soften their hearts, you know. And lots of songs would be about forgiveness. So everybody who was offended at what I preached would have to forgive me by the time we went into the prayer part of it. So it, worked, it worked really well for our community. But, um, it, but I've had to learn to, of course, in traveling, to adjust to various schedules, various ways. And so, you know, my rebellion against my parents' way of doing church has not been able to last very long. <laughs> but if you have your Bible, if you would uh, turn with me to uh, 1 Kings 17. Um, 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17. And if you if you don't, you can just listen. Uh, but this is a story that uh, I had something completely different I was going to share with you when I walked in your door here. But I felt the Holy Spirit just shift me in a different direction. And so, um, but I want to I want to explain where Elijah is at in, in this passage. Now, Elijah is, as you all know, he's, he's an amazing prophet. He's a very powerful prophet. I mean, in the next chapter, uh, Obadiah says of him, uh, he makes this comment, he goes, he goes, I'm afraid that if because he told him he said go get King Ahab because I'm afraid if I do you'll disappear that's how great that's how powerful of a guy he was he's like I'm afraid the spirit's going to come and whisk you away someplace and so he was a really powerful prophet really amazing guy but in, in, in 1 Kings 17 he's a really tired guy He's really exhausted. And uh, Queen Jezebel uh, is a, a very, she's a very powerful person in, in the kingdom. And uh, she worships a false god, uh, the god of Baal. And she hates Elijah. Uh, because, uh, you know, Elijah prophesies all this stuff she doesn't want to hear. Now, you know, uh, growing up in, in church, I, I, I always heard, anytime anybody would start talking about Jezebel, it was like, oh no. There's some woman in the church that <laughs> this preacher's mad at. 
Það er hérna alltaf er einhver fyrir að tala um Jesubel í, í ræðustólum, þá var alltaf bara, ó oh, nei, er hann að tala til einhver sér inn í það. That's not the case here, I promise you that. Og það er ekki það sem er að eiga sér stað hérna núna. Uh, it, but there is something interesting about this, because Elijah is running for his life, he's, he's, he's scared. Það er eitthvað við þetta, Elísa er hræddur og hann er að hlaupa bara að komast undan. He's a powerful prophet, kraftmikill spámaður. But he's exhausted. En hann er úrvinda. Because he's running for his life. Því hann er að hlaupa og reyna að bjarga lífi sínu. And you know these characters in the Bible, that's not something that's particularly related to the sex that they are, to their gender. Uh, það er ekkert endilega það sem þeir eru upplifa to their gender, to their uh, being male or female. Það er ekki, það er ekkert endilega hefur að gera með hvort að kalli það kona. Uh, it's, it, it's, we can all struggle with different things and it not be particularly related to that. Vi getum verið að ganga inn í ýmsa hlut og verum uh, við getum öll uh, svona eins og átt hlutdeild í þessu. But uh, basically uh, she wants to eliminate, you know, God's voice in the kingdom and Elijah is the picture of God's voice. Uh, Elia er mynd af Guðs rödd en hún vill algjörlega útiloka þessa rödd. But I don't want to focus at all on, on Jezebel, I want to focus on Elijah and his condition that he's in right now. Og ég ætla bara snúa fókusnum á Elia en ekki Jezebel. He's tired of running. Hann er þreyttur á öllum þessum hlaupum. You know, he probably has no friends. Og sennilega á hann ekki enga vini. Uh, I, I have a great privilege to uh, uh, be close to a lot of uh, high profile Christian leaders. Er, er að þeim stað að ég þekki mjög marga kristna sem eru svona konni mjög langt. And I'm, amaz- I'm amazed how many of them don't have a lot of true friends. Og myndra hvað margir að þeim eiga ekki marga góða sanna vini. People that, you know, they can be themselves with, people that can really say what they think, you know, in their lives. It, not a lot of them have those. Fólk sem getur bara verið þú sjálfur við og sagt alla hluti við. And so Elijah is exhausted. Hann Elisa er algjörlega búinn á því. You know, he's this powerful person that probably people are afraid to be friends with. Hann er þessi kraftmikli einstaklingur sem er sumir bara óttast að vera vinir við. And so he's lonely. Hann er einmanna. He's exhausted. Hann er úrvinda. Um, he's afraid he's going to be killed. Og hann óttast það að vera drepinn. Um, there's all these things that are just I think bringing a great amount of stress to Elijah. Og það er alls konar hluti sem að valda stress í lífi hans. And so the Lord in this time speaks this word to Elijah. Og drottin talar þetta orð til Elísa í þessum kringustæðum. And uh, if you would just read uh, 2, 3 and 4, please. Og hann segir hérna í versi 2, og orð drottin komst til hans svo látandi. Far þú hérðan og hald austur á bóginn og fel þig við lækinn krít sem er fyrir austan jórdan og þú skalt drekka úr læknum og hröfnanum hef ég bóðið að fæða þig þar. Now, if you got this as a word from God, how many of you think this is a weird word? That's, that's all. The rest of you are like, oh no, that's a normal word. I get that every morning. Three people raise their hands. Come on. This is a weird word. The problem is this. We've heard it so many times. That we forget that if we were to get that word, this is really weird and strange. Because we've heard about it over and over and over again. How many of you grew up uh, going to Sunday school? Or or See, be- because we did that, we've heard the stories over and over that we've become numb to the shock of the story. Við erum búin að heyra sögurnar svo aftur að við erum að vera tilfinningalaus fyrir kannski sjokkin eða höggjunni sem að sagan á að gefa. I mean, Jesus telling the disciples, put your net on the other side of the boat, that's just, we're like, oh yeah, that would be a normal thing to do. That's not a normal thing to do. Nei, það er ekki þess að það venjulega þegar Jesús segir við lærum sinna settu neti hérna megin við bátinn. It's not like the fisher on the other side of the boat going. Ekki svo fiskurinn sé öllum megin bara bara öðrum megin við bátinn. They're on the wrong side. Þeir eru röng, þeir eru fisk og röngri hlið. That's not how this works. Það er ekki það sem vinnur. So Elijah gets up this morning. Hann fer upp þennan morgun. And God says, yeah, I want you to go down by this ravine. Do you use the word ravine? Down by this little creek. Því að fer þarna niður eftir, eftir, niður að þessum læk. And I want you to camp there. Og ég vil að þú 
tjaldir þar eða komið þér fyrir. And I want you to eat whatever wild animals bring you to eat. Og ég vil að borðir það sem viltu dýrin koma með til þín. Now does it sound like a weird word? Hljómar það núna eins og undarlegt orð? See, I would see this, they, they, in, in Sunday school, they had this thing called flannel graph. Do anybody remember that? Munið hvernig það var í sunnundaðskólun, það var svona flögil tabla, þú settir myndirnar á. And they would tell the stories, you know, by flannel graph, by showing you the pictures. Og þeir sýndu ykkur myndina með því að koma með myndirnar á töfluna. Now my, pa my parents, they pastored, when we moved back from Japan, they pastored in a poor urban, you know, area. Þegar að fórundra minni flutti aftur frá Japan, þá voru þau pastorar í kirkju sem var svona aðeins í útjarðinum. And so our flannel graph was donated to us from the Baptist church down the street. Svo við fengum gefin svona flöyiltöflu frá kirkju rétt hjá. So it was a little tattered, a little torn. Og hún var svona aðeins litin. So I grew up thinking Peter was an amputee. A what? An amputee, somebody cut off his leg. Já, já. Ég ólst hann upp að það vantaði útlifana jafnvel á Pétur þegar að þarna í flannografinu. Somebody had torn the leg off our flannel graph and I thought, oh, Peter was an amputee. Og einhver hafði mist eitt togað hérna hendin af og ég hugsa mér að það vantar hendin á Pétur. And so, you know, we would watch these stories. Og við horfðum á þessu sögur. And like our Sunday school teacher was talking about this one Sunday. Og sunnundaskóla kennir að vera að tala með deita inn. And I raised my hand. Because they were talking about, you know, wild animals bringing food to Elijah. Yeah, they were talking wild deers that were coming to eat Elisa. Elia. Are any of you shocked if you were to get this word? How many of you would be like, "Oh, that's that's a scary word to go by the ravine." Fe mörg eka mundi ræðast eða óttast eða fengi svona orð. All the extroverts raise their hand. All the introverts are like, "I love that word." Allir sem eru inni í sér, þeir elska þetta orðin hinir alveg, já, nei, ég vil ekki ganga í þetta. Please God, get me away from these people, let that work. Guð, láttu mig komast í burtu hérðan. And so, all of a sudden, you know, he gets this word, and so I would see this, these wild animals bringing Elijah food, and I would think, we would say in English, we'd say, I was thinking roadkill. Ég sá að í myndunum að þeir voru að koma öll þessu vilt eða viltu dýrin komið með matand og honum þá ímyndaði ég mér að þarna verður dýr á ferðinni sem áruð fyrir bíl. You know the dead animals that get hit by cars, roadkill. Dýr sem verða fyrir bíl. Anybody else think roadkill when you see this scripture? Er einhver annars sem hugsa svona þegar þið lesið þessi vers? Three people. Three, einstakingur. So, that's how weird I am, that's what I think. And I raised my hand in Sunday school. Svona skrítinni ég og ég lyftu pöndina í sunnundaðskólunum. I said, so pretty much God provided roadkill. For Elijah. And the Sunday school teacher's like, Robbie, stop it. <laughs> Robbie, hætta tala. It was not roadkill. And I was like, yes it is. They are dead animals that these wild beasts are bringing to Elijah to eat. And she goes, you always say these weird things. Get in the corner. And so I'm sitting in the corner for the rest of Sunday school. And I'm like, I know it's roadkill. And she was like, look at the flannel graph. Those are two little pieces of bread in those birds' mouth. There <laughs> is no meat there. So let's read on. So we're going to lay off from. Go ahead and read okay. five and six. Og þú skal drekka á læknum og hröfnunum hef ég gefið að fæða þig þar. Og svo kemur hann gjörði sem drottnum bauð honum fór og settist að við lækin krít sem er fyrir rustan jórdan og hrafnarnir færðu honum brauð og kjöt á morgnana og brauð og kjöt á kvöldin og hann drakk og lækna Do you see it? Sjá við því Right there in the Bible, roadkill Segir hérna, kjöt Now this is a weird word Og þetta er mjög skrítið orð But it's so strange because it says Elijah did as the Lord commanded Það segir að Elía gerði það sem Guð bauð honum. Why? Af hverju? God said. Guð sagði. God said he would do it. Guð sagði það myndi gera það. It doesn't make any sense. Það er ekki, 
mjög skynsamlegt. Now how many of you if you were to get this word you're like I need at least three confirmations. Ef ef þið fengið svona orð þá myndu þið segja ég þarf minnst kosti 3 staðfestingar. And they really good tent or caravan. Ég þarf annað kort mjög góðan gott hjólísi eða tjald with months of supplies before. Með mánaðar hlutum til að fæða mig af. She's not here so I can say this. My wife just went to a women's retreat. Eh kona mín er komin af svona samkomum. And she, she sent me a picture hún sendi mér mynd of the bunk beds that they were going to be sleeping in in this women's retreat. Í kojunum sem þeir áttu að sofa í á þessum stað. Now I do retreats all the time. I sleep in those bunk beds all the time. Við erum með svona mót og ég sef í svona uh, kojum all, alltaf. But my wife writes text me and she goes how much do you love me? <laughs> hún skrifar mér skilaboð og sagði hve heitt elskar mig. She's like I want a hotel room. <laughs> Og bak við orðin má lesa að ég hörðu, ég vil frekar vera á hóteli. Didn't God tell you to go to this retreat? Sagði ykkur þeir ekki að fara á þetta, þessa kvennar ástefnu? That didn't get me very far at all. Þetta reif mig ekki neitt mjög mikið. So here he goes and, and, you know, it says that these wild animals bring him bread and meat. Það segir að viltu dýrin eða rafnandi koma með kjöt og brauð. Now I have six sons. Ég á sex sinni. I can't imagine, I mean, what did these animals, how did these ravens respond? They just go, you know, they bring them meat, like... Hvernig komu þeir eiginlega með þetta? Bara komu þeir og sleftu, opnuðu kjaftin og sleftu kjötinu? I have a domesticated dog. Ég er með hund sem er mjög heimavanur. That I can't get food away from. Ég get ekki haldið matnum frá honum. I'm more afraid of trying to get food away from my children than my dog. My kids will bite you if you try to take their food away from them. I can't imagine trying to get food away from wild animals. But these wild animals do it. Why? God said. God said. God said. Now, this, how many of you are thinking this is the perfect situation? Þetta er hinn fullkomna, fullkomna kringustæður. You get to go by a ravine, you get to drink from the brook, you get to drink from the water, and, you, and, and your food is delivered to you. Þetta er fullkomna ráðstæð, þú drekkur vatnið og læknum matnað og það er komið með matinn bara til þín, heimsetningar þjónusta. You just relax, you chill out. I mean, how many of you are like, that's, bara I like that. Þetta er það sem ég vil. That's that's a nice that's a nice situation to be in. That er mjög góð aðstæða til að vera í. Okay, I got my hand up. Yeah, me mína hendu. You know, this this is a nice deal. I just spending time with God, being in God's presence, just chilling out. Bara að vera í nærveru Guðs og slaka á. This is good. Þetta er gott. And yet we think that the relationship with God is all about our own spiritual development. En við höldum að samfélagi og sambandi við Guði sé allt um okkar þroska í trúnni. We think our relationship with God is all about just us learning more about him and connecting with him. Og við lærum meira um hann og hann og höfum meira samband við hann. And so this would be the perfect picture, you know, for us in having and developing that relationship. Svo þetta væri fullkomin mynd eða aðstæða til að vera í til að þróa þá mynd sem við búin að lýsa. But look at the next verse. En líti á næsta vers. Read uh, verse uh, 7 if you would. En eftir nokkur tíma þornaði lækurinn upp því að eigi hafði komið skúr á jörð. And then 8 and 9 too, please. Þá kom ordrottin til hans og látandi, tak þig upp og far til sarfeta sem til er í sítón og sestar að. Sjá, ég hef bóðið ekki nokkur að fæða þig. Now this is a good situation. Þetta er mjög góð rastaður. But all of a sudden, the wild beast stopped bringing you roadkill. En allt í einu þá hætta viltu dýrin að koma með döða kjötið á götinni And the water dries up. og vatnið þurkast upp. That's a very disappointing thing. Það er mjög neikvætt, mikil vonbriði. Why does it happen? Af hverju gerist þetta? Because God wants Elijah in the community. Því að Guð vill Elísa inn á meðal fólks. God wants Elijah amidst people. Guð vill fá Elía inn á meðal fólksins. Your relationship with God is not all about you and Jesus being alone together. Það er ekki sambjand þitt við Guð, er ekki bara þú og Jesu og búið. It's very important. Það er mjög mikilvægt að hægja það þannig. You don't ignore that part of it. Við hérna aflegjum það ekki. 
But that's where you get filled up to go be poured out for the community. It's not just about your own personal spiritual development. Some of, some of us come to church and we're just like, okay, I've got to put my time in. Now let me get back to the stuff I want to do. But it's, our relationship with Jesus is way more than that. You know, Jesus, when he tells the disciples, come and follow me, it's not, he's not standing there teaching them the whole time. He's having them in proximity to him in his life. And he's training them by just being with him so they can catch what he is and what he is giving so that they can later give away. This thing of, of following God and, and Christianity isn't about just you getting, it's about us giving. And I'm, and I'm not talking about an offering right now. I'm talking about giving with your life. It applies to money, but it applies to everything. Does this make sense? Uh, Am I making sense? Oh. Okay. So it says he he goes to the village. And he and God says, I've instructed a widow there to feed you. Finally, a prophetic word that makes sense. <laughs> a human being feeding you makes perfect sense. Wild animals does not. I would imagine Elijah's like, I don't need a confirmation for this word because it makes sense. Of course a widow's going to feed you. She's probably glad that, you know, you're giving her some attention and spending some time with her. She's like, yeah, I'll feed you for that, yes. So this word makes perfect sense. So Elijah goes to the village. It says in verse 10. And he sees this widow there. And she's gathering sticks. And he approaches her and says, would you get me a glass of water to drink? And he says, and while, and while she's going to get a glass of water for him to drink, she says, will you, make, will you bring me back something to eat too? Why does he do that? God said. He'd instructed a widow to feed him. So Elijah is just trusting what God said. And it makes sense. But she turns and she says something to Elijah that's very interesting. She says, I swear by the Lord your God, Elijah. Now that shows us the condition of this widow. This widow is in really bad shape. She's not in a good place. Basically, she's saying, Elijah, he's your God, he's not mine. She's thinking, Elijah, God will show up for you, but he has not shown up for me. She's in a bad place. She goes, I don't have a bite of bread to eat. She goes, I only have a handful of flour left in the bottom of a barrel and a little bit of oil in this jug. The scripture says it's the equivalent to make like two little biscuits. She says, I was going to go make this for me and my son. We were going to eat it, and then we were going to find a hole to crawl in and then die. Sounds like a pretty good life plan, doesn't it? 
We're gonna make these two little biscuits, we're gonna eat them, and then we're just gonna find a hole and we're just gonna crawl in and die. This woman has no hope. She's in a very, very bad place. Now, Elijah's response is so compassionate. It's so pastoral. When you hear Elijah's response, you're like, I wish Elijah was my pastor. It's so loving. It brings tears to my eyes. Because Elijah looks at her. Now, if we heard a widow say that and we had had that word, we would be like, I'm sorry. God told me he had instructed a widow to feed me. I've obviously approached the wrong widow. Would you go get your list of widows in this village and bring it to me? So I can go through and find the widow that God did speak to. Who has enough. Clearly it's not you because you don't have enough. I mean, how many of you would be like, I, you know, oh, I'm so sorry. We would just back out. I'm sorry, obviously I heard wrong. I would do that. Because that's what normal people do. But Elijah is far too pastoral and loving. And Elijah looks at her and he goes, I'm so sorry. He goes, you go ahead and you make those two little biscuits, just like you said. And when you're done, and as you and your son are bringing those two warm, lovely smelling biscuits to your mouth, and they're approaching your tight, gaunt cheeks, <laughs> And you're smelling that delicious bread and you're salivating at the thought of eating it. Right before you take a bite, bring them both to me so I can eat them instead. How pastoral. How loving. What word comes to mind about Elijah? Jerk! <laughs> what a big jerk! How many of you have thought that before? No, because you're too spiritual. <laughs> you're far more spiritual than I am. When I read it, I'm like, what a big jerk. Because I am not as spiritual as you people are. <laughs> if this was, if this woman was in the city where I planted my church, first, the biggest miracle of this story is she actually does it. If this, if this woman was in the city where I planted my church, she wouldn't do it. She would kill Elijah and eat Elijah. <laughs> Elijah would be on a fire in her back garden. Elijah would be on a fire in her back garden. And she would be going, oh, he was a good prophet. Mm, a mm. really good prophet. <laughs> He's going to go really good with those two little pieces of bread we're about to eat. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm not. <laughs> but she doesn't do that. She goes ahead and she makes these two I'm sorry, I don't think she did it with a good heart. I think she's over there mixing that biscuit, though. 
held hann hafi svona hugsað ímislegt með að vera ræra kökuna. And I think she says you call yourself a man of God. Þe kallar þú sjálfum að þig guðsmann. Prophet. Spámann. Frekt í degið. See if God shows you that. Já, ef að guðin og sýndi þetta. Let's test your prophetic skills. Við skulum kanna spámannlega gáu þína. She bakes them. Hún bakar kökurnar. She brings them to Elijah. Kemur með það til Elijah. And he's so kind, he lets her and her son watch. Hann er svo kærleysríkur, hann leifir henni og sinunum að horfa á. And he's like, um. Og hann alveg hérna, um. And she and her son are going. Og svo hann rennar og hún sjálfur horfa á að undrun. Salivating as he is eating their last meal. Hann er að borða þeirra síðustu máltíð. And he's sitting there slowly eating. Oh, it would be terrible for you to die. You bake really good little biscuits. Vá, hvað þú byrði til góð var kökur. Það var ekki gott ef að þú myndu deyja. This should not happen. Þetta ætti ekki að gerast. You are too good of a cook. Þú ert allt og góðu kokkur. And then he finishes eating them. Svo klára hann að borða kökurnar. And he says now. Og svo segir hann. Go and make you and your son some also. Some biscuits. Já, farðu og bakaðu núna köku handa þér og sinunum. Go make them for years, you and your son now. Farðu nú og baka handa þér og sinunum. I imagine she says, I'm sorry. Ég get ímynda mér að hún segi, byrðu fyrir ekki þau. What do you not understand? Skildur ekki. That was all the food we had. Þetta er allum maturinn sem við áttum. You ate everything that a widow and orphan had, now we have nothing. Nú eigum við ekki neitt út búin að borða allt sem ekki hann átti og munaði lesu sonurinn. You big jerk. Þú skrítni kall. I told you we didn't have any more flour. Ég sagði þér að við ættum ekki meira kveiti. See, it was the last. Þetta er síðasta. There's more flour. Það er ekkit meira flár. Ekkit meira kveiti. Oh, but we used all the oil. There's no. Og þegar þú sagði olíuna þá. There's more oil. Það er, það byrðu er meira olía. But it was all gone. En hún var farin hérna á hann. The Bible says. Biblían segir. Every time she goes to that barrel. Alltaf þegar hún fór í krukkurnar. There's always enough. Það var alltaf nóg. There's another handful. Það var til önnur, annar handfylli. There's more oil. Það er meiri olía. It never runs out. Hún gengur aldrei til þurðar. It never fills up. Já, það hún fylltist aldrei alveg upp. But it never runs out. En hún tæmdist aldrei. Now here's what we would say. Já, hérna er það sem við myndum segja. God, I'll give it. Guð gefur það. When you fill it up. Ég skal gefa það þegar þú búin að fylla það. You fill it up, then I'll give it. Ég þú fyllt alveg upp í topp og þá skal ég gefa. That's when I'll give. Þá er það, þá er það stundi sem ég gef. And God says, og Guð segir, I can't provide until you give it. Ég get ekki gefið þér eða búið til fyrir þú gefur. I can't multiply it until you give it to me. Ég get ekki margfaldið það fyrir þú hefur gefið mér það. So here's a question. So here's a spurning. Was the miraculous provision kraftaverka laust was it for Elijah or was it for the widow var það handa ekkjunni eða Elia I think it was for the widow ég held að það verið fyrir ekkjuna I think Elijah could have approached any widow in that village ég held að Elia hefði getað komið að hvað ekki sem er í þessu þorpi and that provision would have been for them og þessi laust hefði verið fyrir viðkomandi He could have walked away and looked for the next one. Hann hefði getað farið frá þessar og gengið að næstu. The miraculous provision, I believe, was for the widow. Undur, undursamleg laust er að koma því að veit eitthvað. Because he didn't eat of the miraculous provision, he ate of the provision. Hann eit ekki að kraftaverka hann Guðs heldur að því sem var til. The miracle didn't happen until after she gave it. Kraftaverki áttu ekki staðið fyrir hann búin að gefa. Here's the thing, guys. Hérni luturinn. We're always saying, I don't have enough. I don't have enough faith to pray for the sick. I don't have enough money to tithe, give 10% of my income. I don't have enough to give to missions. I don't have enough time to serve in the children's ministry. I need time. I don't have time. You need time? Give time and you'll get time. Give the time and you'll get time. Give time and God will multiply time. Give the time and God will multiply time. You give that and God will multiply it. Give the time and God will multiply it. And we're saying I don't have enough. Yeah, okay, no, say it. 
I don't have enough to, I don't have enough faith to pray for little, you know, cuts on kids' fingers, much less migraine headaches or cancer. Ég á ekki nómiklega trú til að byrja fyrir einhverju litlu, hvað þá mígræni eða krabbaminni. The Lord's saying, will you reach in the barrel? Guð segir þú horfur í krukkunar. You see, the widow, ekkjan, she's trusting Elijah's word. Hún er að toga eftir orðum Elija. She's trusting circumstances. Hún tristir kringumstæðanum. Elijah isn't trusting circumstances. Elija gerir það ekki. He's trusting the word of God. Hann tristir orðið Guðs. He's saying now God said. Hann segir Guð segir. The circumstances don't match what God said. Kringumstæðanar passa ekki við það sem Guð er að segja. Elijah doesn't seem to go, okay Lord, I need a second option here because I, this one isn't working. Guð segir, Elijah segir ekki, Guð hefur byrjað, ég þarf eitthvað, eitthvað, eitthvað númer tvö hérna til að gera því að þetta er ekki að virka. We never think we have enough. Við höldum alltaf að eigum ekki nóg. But will we just reach in the barrel? En þegar við horfum í krukkuna. Will we just pour out? Og byrjum að hella. You want to see cancer go from people? Viltu fjá krabba minni hvar á fólki? Start praying for headaches. Þá skaldu byrja að byrja fyrir hausverk. You can go straight for cancer. Þú getur farið beint í krabba minni og byrja fyrir því. You want to see people get out of wheelchairs? Viltu sjá fólk fara út úr hjólastól? Start praying for sore knees. Þá skaldu byrja að byrja fyrir sárum njóm. Changing the world. Breyta heiminum. Starts across the street. Byrjar hinnum eða við götuna. It starts with the neighbor next door to you. Það er byrja með nágrannum hinnum með við götuna. It starts with the lady beside you at the grocery store. Það er byrja með konunni sem við hliðin á í kjörbúðinni. It starts with the locker beside you at school. Það er byrja við skóla hérna lokkarana. Changing the world doesn't start on the other side of the world. Breytingar í heiminum byrja ekki bara á hinnum endanum í heiminum. It will just reach in the barrel. Það er bara hérna að horfa í krukkuna. And expect God to show up. Og treysta því að Guð munu sína sig. See, he didn't want the miracle to happen in Elijah's hand. Hann vildi ekki að krafta ekki gerðist í höndum Elija. He wanted the miracle to happen in the widow's hand. Hann vildi að krafta ekki gerðist í höndum ekkjunar. Can I share one story? Get it eitt einni sögu með ykkur? None of my stories are short. I'll just warn you now. Engar mína sögur eru stuttar í bara. So my son and I have been like on this quest to raise the dead for like years. Við vorum í svona á einhverju ferð, ég og sonum minn að reisa hennar döðu. And uh, in 2015, I probably prayed for at least, you know, just one on one, like 23 dead people to be raised from the dead. Og á þessum árum var ég búin að byrja fyrir minnst kosti 23 sem voru dánir. I mean, I think that's impressive. None of them are raised from the dead. They're all still dead. I was not successful. But I didn't stop. And I was in, uh, in England in a little, little village called Inglewhite. Inglewhite, the entire village is 180 people. 180 manns búa í öllu þorpinu. And uh, the, the church where I went to speak, there's only two churches there, and the church I went to speak would seat 200 people. Og það eru tvær kirkjur hann á einu kirkjan sem ég fór að tala í, hún var með sæti fyrir 200 manns. And I, I was, I had ministered at these festivals in England where there's like, you know, thousands of people that go to them. Ég var að þjóna þarna á svona samkomum og það voru þúsundur sem komu. And the pastor of this church had seen me minister uh, several nights and with literally 8,000 people. Og þessi pastorinn í kirkjun hafði séð mig á þessum hinnum staðinu þar sem ég var að tala fyrir fram að fullt af fólki. And he saw lots of people get healed. Sá fullt af fólki læknast. And he's like, I, I wonder if this guy would come to my little church. Og ég bara, bittu, getur þessi gauður kannski komið og predikaði minni kirkjun? There was only 50 or 60 people in that church. Það voru 50 eða 60 manns í kirkjunni. But my church was never big. So I was like, yeah, I'll come. Mein kirkja var aldrei neitt mjög stór, svo ég sem bara, já, ok, ég kem. I told him, I said, I can't come on a weekend, but I could come like on a Monday and Tuesday. Ég get ekki að koma um helgi, ég kem, ég get koma mánda eða þriðið. And they were all excited, they had put it in the newspaper and all this stuff. Og þau voru mjög spent og voru búin að setja þetta í blöðin og... So the entire village shows up. Svo bara öll, allt litla þorpi kom á samkomu. And then it's right close to Preston, England, so there was a bunch of more people came from Preston, England. In the building there was probably about 300 people. Og það eru 300 manns í byggingunni, það komum líka frá bæði sem er þannig rétt hjá sem heitir Preston. And I got up and I was starting to preach. Ég byrjaði að predika. And four rows back from where I was standing. 
fjórum röðum frá því sem ég stóð. There was this man that was about 40 years old sitting in the aisle. Það var maður sem sat við gangin, fertur. His mother was sitting beside him. Móður hans við hliðin á honum. And just so happens a doctor sitting right behind him. Og svo undarlega vil til að hafa læknir sem hann sat bak við hann. And all of a sudden uh, I got up and I said turn to your Bibles. And the mother began to scream, "My son, my son, somebody help my son!" Og móðurinn byrja bara að hrópa eða öskra, sonum en sonum en einhverju hjálpi, einhverju hjálpi sinni mínum. And I looked and her son was like, like he looked like a board. He was just stiff like a board. Og ég horfi á og drengurum var eins og stíf spýta. And it looked like somebody had just laid a board against a chair because he was like straight and his hands were curled like this. And his eyes were really big. Augun voru mjög stór og bara hann var algjörlega stífur. And uh and and he was he, he looked like horrified. Og hann leit út svona hryllilega. Það var þetta var ekki fögur sjón. And the mother was screaming, "Somebody help my son, please, someone help my son." Og móðirinn hrópaði, "Einhver hjálpi sinni minni, gerið að komi og hjálpið." And I saw this dark cloud over his head. It was in the spirit, it wasn't natural, but I could, I could see it over his head. Og ég sá í andanum svona svart ský yfir höfði drengsins. And I was like, "This is demonic." Og ég sem er þetta er eitthvað andlegt. And so I stepped off the stage and I walked over to him. Og ég fór af sviðinn og gekk í áttina til hans. Now the pastor and the leaders, they Panicked. This is a proper little English village church. They've never seen anything like that happen in their life. They had no idea what they were doing inviting me to come there. And the mother screaming, help my son, my son, he's having a stroke. And she said that because he had had a stroke one year before. And he didn't have the ability to say anything but yes and no. Hann hafði fengið slag áður og hafði ekki eiginlega að segja neitt með bara já og nei. And I looked at her and I said, I don't think this is a stroke. This is uh, something else. I said, does he have epilepsy? Og ég sagði við konuna, þetta er ekki, lítur ekki eins og sé að fá slag. Er hann holdsveik, nei, er hann hérna með floga, flogabeiki? She said, I don't think he's ever had a seizure before. I have never seen him or heard heard of that no i don't i don't know he doesn't have that no sagði móðurinn ég held hann hafi ekki and so i put my hand on him and i began to pray og ég lagði hönd mína á hann og byrjaði að biðja now the pastor and the leaders they started having people leave because they were for them it was like somebody screamed bomb or fire or something þeir fór pastorinn og leiðtogarnir voru að láta fólk bara fara úr kirkjunni því að fyrir þeim var þetta bara bittu eins og eldur hefði kveiknað eitthvað and they literally took out uh, like 120 people out of the church building because they 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 just freaked out þeir bara panikkeru og bara um 120 manns yfirgáu salinn and so i put my hand on his chest and i started praying for him and i started commanding him to be healed and i started binding the spirit of sickness og ég byrjaði að binda anda veikinnar og og, og reka af honum with each prayer, it, it's getting worse. I mean, his face is turning like purple, his lips are turning blue-black, which means he's not getting any oxygen. His hands are curled up like this against his chest. And I keep praying, and the more I pray, the worse it gets. And his mother is just screaming. Því verra var þetta og móðurinn bara öskraði. And she's like, he's dying, he's dying. Hann er að deyja, hann er að deyja. The doctor Alla. behind him is, is, you know, has his fingers on his neck, checking his pulse, you know, making sure he has a pulse. And he's og, like, this is not good. Og læknirinn sem hann fyrir aftan hann í sætarauðinu settið fingur á púlsun og sagði bara, þetta er ekki, lofar ekki góðu. And I said to him, I said, well, let's lay him on the floor uh, because I wanted to lay him down so I could it's strange to hear, but I wanted to put my chest against his chest. Because I've been with many people when they're dying, and I've seen people die like that. And so I was like, you know, I wanted to follow a biblical step and do that. Ég hef séð marga deyja og mér langa að fylgja þessum prinsipum og, og sjá þetta gerast. 
And the doctor said, well, that's fine, but we have to keep his head up so he doesn't swallow his tongue. So we laid him on the floor, and when we did that, it got even worse. And his head turned towards me, and, and this huge amount of fluid just poured out of his mouth. And he went into what we call in English the death rattle the death breathing and it's sort of this gurgling or almost snoring sound that people make it's their last breath before they die now his lips are fully blue black his face is no longer purple now it is very white and and when he starts breathing these breaths, he turns his head and, and faces me, and his pupils dilate, which means brain dead. And I immediately, I was like, this man is dying right now. He, he's, he's almost dead. And his mother's screaming, he's dead, he's dead. And I heard him, and that was it. And the doctor looked at me and he shook his head and he said, he's dead. And, and, and I stood up. And I'm looking at this man's just his his eyes lost control. They went the two different directions. And all of a sudden I just had this sinking feeling come and this cold feeling come across my back and through my chest. And all of a sudden, I began to see in my mind's eye all the faces of all the people I prayed for to be raised from the dead, none of which were ever raised from the dead. And I started hearing, just in my, in my mind, I started hearing, you don't have enough. You couldn't do it before. You can't do it now. You will never have enough. The doctor was taking his coat off, getting ready to do CPR. Several minutes had passed by this time. And then I realized. You're afraid. No, you're terrified. Not me. Satan. I realize Satan's terrified. He's terrified about what's about to happen, and he's projecting all his fear onto me to keep me away from doing it. And I shouted out and I said no. And I put my hand on the man's chest and I said I command you to rise in the name of Jesus. I said I bind the spirit of death and I command you to rise right now. Nothing was happening. The doctor is starting to push me back because his coat's off, his tie's off, he's ready to do CPR. And I said, no, you will rise. I command you to rise now in Jesus' name. Rise up in the name of Jesus. I prayed that 25 times before. And then all of a sudden, he goes, and I was like, oh. I about fell over backwards. 
Ég bara fór, fór heila röð aftur He started breathing. Hann byrjaði að anda. And then he rolls over onto his stomach and he pushes himself up. Og hann snýr á hina leiðina og byrjar að ýta sjálfum sér upp. And he looks at everybody in the room which was about this many people left. Og hann horfði yfir salinn sem var svo, svona mikill hópur eins og nú er. He stands up and looks at them and he winks at them. Og hann blikkar þá. And he says what is everybody looking at? Akkurat allir að horfa hingað. And I was like Dude, you like died. Og ég sem er heyrðu góður minn, þú varst bara dauður rétt á hann. And he goes, no, I feel fine. Nei, mér líður mjög vel. And I'm like, no, you like died. Ask the doctor, and the doctor's like, oh yeah, you died, you were dead. Þú dóst á hann, það er alveg satt, spurðu bara læknir, hann getur staðið það. And he goes, I feel, I feel fine, no, there's nothing wrong with me. Það er ekkert að mér, segir hann. And his mother starts screaming, he can talk, he can talk, because he couldn't talk before. Og mamman byrjar að öskra því að hún segir, hann getur talað, hann getur talað, hann talað aldrei áður. And so I prayed for him, I prayed protection over him, and I said, now go back to the back of the church, an ambulance is coming. Go to the hospital, let them check you out, make sure everything's okay. Og þökku um Guði sem farðu aftur í kirkjuna og sjúkrabyndunum leiðinni, láttu þá tjakka þig og fá um niðurstöðuna. And he goes, I don't need to go to the hospital, I feel fine. Ég þarf ekki að fara að spítala, mér líður vel. I said, go to the back of the church, wait for the ambulance, it's coming, let them check you out, make sure everything's okay. Já, farðu aftur í kirkjuna og bítt eftir sjúkrabyndunum og láttu þá tjakka þú. It's like, okay, so he goes to the back of the church. Hann fer þangað aftur í kirkjuna. Ambulance comes and takes him. Og sjúkrabyndin kemur og tekur hann. I told the pastor, I said, bring everybody back in here. Og ég sagði, pastor, láttu alla að koma hingað aftur inn. And the pastor looked at me and said, what? Og hann sagði, býttu, hva? Hvað menur þú? And I said, yeah, get everybody and bring them back in. Já, komdum alla hingað inn, sagði. And he goes, Robbie, a man just died in this church. Og hann sagði, Robbie, það var bara maður að deyja hérna rétt á þannig kikkinu. I said, pastor, a man was just raised from the dead in this church. Og ég sagði, pastor, það var maður sem var reistur upp frá döðum. I said, bring everybody back in. Komdum alla inn aftur. And so they came back in, and I had the doctor tell what had happened. Svo það allir kom inn og ég sagði læknunum að segja hvað frá því sem hefur gerst. Because I was like, oh, it would be smarter to have a doctor say it than me say it. Það er svona, hljóma betur að heyra læknu segja frá þessi mig, mér. The next day we went to the, the hospital. The pastor called me the next morning. He goes, will you come with me to visit the man in the hospital? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and we're not sure how that it happened. But somehow in the process of, somehow he tore his rotator cuff, his shoulder. And when we went to visit him in the hospital, his arm was in a sling and he couldn't move it because it was in horrific pain. The surgeon was preparing for surgery. They were going to do surgery on his shoulder and, you know, uh, to repair the tear. We prayed for him before he went to surgery. And his shoulder was completely 100% healed. The doctor came back in, took him back for another scan. The tear was complete, it had to completely disappeared. Og þeir komu og fór aftur með hann í tækin til að sjá hvort allt var í lægi og það var hundra prósti lægi. He had zero pain, they released him from the hospital and they said, we can't find anything wrong with him. Það var með enga verki og þeir bara útskriðið hann á sjúkrahúsinu. Will you reach in the barrel? Muntu vilja fara í krúsina þína? Now some of you have reached in before and you felt like you came back with nothing. But will you reach in again? And again. And again. And again. He wants to do the miracle in your hands. Not in Elijah's. In your hands. Will you reach in the barrel? Will you fara og teigja þig eftir kurkurukkunni. This applies to every part of your life. Þetta hefur að gera með öll svið, á viðu öll svið lífstins. Every area. Hvert einasta svið. Would you stand? Myndu rís og fætur. I just want to pray for you and then I want to hand the mic back to the pastor. Ég vil byrja fyrir þér og síðan ætli að aðvinta pastornum.